recording studio somewhere far, far away. A lot of members of David's close family are in tonight. Um, I, don't, I don't know if, if you saw the ice skating last week I, on the ice skating championships. I thought that was brilliant. The skaters, when they're on the ice, they look transfigured. But afterwards, when they're sitting on the couch waiting for the results, they just look like young boys in the Wigmore Club, <laughs> covered in makeup and wondering how much the judges will give them. <laughs> but now, Pun and Dennis, yo! <laughs> Yes, KTEL presents now That's What I Call Satire, Volume 2. Classic hits on one sensational double album. How are the Conservatives doing in the opinion polls? And meanwhile, interest rates are... And the Tory backbenchers have one message for Margaret Thatcher. The riots over the poll tax continue, even in staunch Tory areas like the Thames Valley. Sup up your beer and collect your fates. There's a row going on down this south. But Kenneth Baker knows the reason for high poll tax bills. I don't blame it on the sunshine. I don't blame it on moonlight. I don't blame it on the good times. High spending Labour councils. <laughs> But with Labour 20% ahead in the opinion polls, where does this leave the centre ground? What about Paddy Ashdown? He's a real man. And as for David Owen... Nobody wants to know him. can see that he's just a king. At the Ministry of Agriculture, they've still got big worries about our food. Professor, how would you describe the state of a herd of British cows? Madness. Madness, they call it madness. But worse is to come on our farms. It's not just mad cows. Now we've got... <laughs> Abroad now, and Mr Gorbachev is annoyed about Lithuania. Where do you want them, Gorby? Back in the US, back in the US, back in the USSR. And in the world of football, top Millwall player Tony Cascarino is on the transfer list. Any particular team you don't want to buy you, Tony? I want to go to Chelsea. <laughs> Well, can't blame you there. Now, let's say a brief hello to Nelson Mandela. I'm coming home after <laughs> But let's move on swiftly to Arthur Scargill. Stop teasing, Arthur. Tell us the truth. Is it a wig or not? Shake it loose and let it fall. But of course the budget's coming up. We've got a new Chancellor since the last one pissed off to get... Money for nothing in your chest. <laughs> of course, high street spending is still racing ahead as people rush out to buy satellite dishes. So what's Sky Television got to offer the viewer? Well, that's it. So that's that's what I call satire, volume two, available in your shops now. And with the uh, budget coming up next week, the economics experience, the Mary Whitehouse experience guide to economic theory. Now, firstly, the big problem causing the trade gap at the moment is invisible imports. They must be causing all sorts of trouble at customs. <laughs> Now, where are those boxes of... Oh, God! <laughs> I really can't see the... Oh! <laughs> uh, as well as invisible imports, there are invisible earnings, the sort received by nurses, ambulance workers... <laughs> and... <laughs> yes, and then, ladies and gentlemen, we did! It's kind of stuff. Thanks for the quite on. And of course, not only them, Ken Dodd. Um... <laughs> 
Invisible Learnings are kind of lies, but not as much as the song I'm Invisible by Alison Moyet. <laughs> the, other... <laughs> the other main problem for the government at the moment is inflation. Inflation is created by wage rises when the information reaches the retailers. Now, this means that when the bloke at my local corner shop hears on the news that four workers are getting 12%, he thinks, right, that's 5p on every packet of a Torah. Although, in fact, if it's the bloke at my local corner shop, he probably hears that Rainbow is on and thinks, right, that's 5p on every packet of a tour. <laughs> the nightmare is that inflation may lead to hyperinflation. And uh, there's a famous story of a man who went to an undeveloped part of the world and was in a taxi. And during the course of that one cab ride, due to inflation, the price went up by 300,000% more than the original quoted price, as the driver explained when they got to Deptford. <laughs> Marxist economics suggests that what is needed is workers' control of banks, but how would this work? Hello, I'd like a new kind of bank account. <laughs> well, it's going to cost you. <laughs> I can't do anything before Thursday. <laughs> well, I... All right, all right, I'll see what I can do. John! Hi, mate! <laughs> I've got a bloke here who wants a new kind of bank account. What's that you say? Linda Lusardi! <laughs> <laughs> and how will this... How does this affect investment? And in the city today, the Bank of England invested £5 billion in Greyhounds, Charrington Bass and wife-beating. <laughs> Meanwhile, the gold standard was reintroduced in the shape of necklaces with Darren on them. <laughs> the pound was finally separated from the Deutschmark. A spokesman for the Treasury commented, Well, it's the Krauts in it. <laughs> The British economy has been kept afloat as a result of North Sea oil, or at least the economy in that part of the country which is furthest away from the North Sea. Without North Sea oil, the South might have ended up just like the North. Hello. <laughs> Are you coming down the job club? <laughs> Why I, lad? <laughs> I'm going to buy a record by Whitesnake. By the way, do you like my new perm? And here is my ugly girlfriend. <laughs> and now the complaints experience. Now, you can't get very far in life without learning to complain. In fact, complaining is probably the first skill that we ever learn. Babies are brilliant at complaining. If they're not happy about something, they ball their head off until someone puts it right, and babies always get the attention that they want. In fact, since this technique always works so well, it's surprising that it hadn't spread to older age groups. Airline? Yes, I'm sorry, but you came round the other day and fixed a washer in my radiator. Right, well, I'll call that charge. is 25. No, 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 I don't want to pay again. I've paid once and you've done the job wrong and I want you to come round and I want it put right. Oh, I can't do that, sir. Look, you fixed my washer wrong. No, I can tell you what I think the trouble is, sir. It's your washer. Look, I want you <laughs> to come round and fix my washer! No, 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 listen, no, no, there's a plumber on the way, sir, a plumber wummy. Plummy wummy is coming, sir. Yeah. Uh, your little witch soon be fixy wixy sir, because plummy wummy is on his way. Uh, I've got a rattle here, son. Oh, that's got the bastard. Now, in reality, <laughs> one group of, uh, of British people who, the only group, in fact, just about, who, who don't seem to have any trouble uh, complaining are people who listen to BBC radio. Now, we've <laughs> wanted to do this for a long time, because uh, the, the BBC gets a lot of complaints about its regular programmes, and they come in, uh, and what I'd basically like to do is read you some of them. There's uh, a complaint that came in about the news from a couple of months ago. The BBC must be very disappointed that despite all their hard work, the water sell-off is a success. Please stick to reporting news. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's one from Radio 4's Today programme. Caller thought it was highly irresponsible to allow the policeman to describe how to make napalm petrol bombs. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh... Here's a good one. Someone actually went to the phone, found the number of Broadcasting House, dialed the number and complained that English concertinas work on the push and pull method devised by Charles Wheatstone in 1827. <laughs> and that was from a Mr Dickinson, Charles Wheatstone and Co in Suffolk. Um, now, where's another one? Oh, this is a good one. This is obviously from sometime in, in December. And this, uh, this is a, a complaint that came into Radio 4. Uh, Jay Fuller found it most annoying that Gardner's question time should be dropped in favour of a programme about Romania. Which is... Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, another one from Radio 4. Eating dogs in Korea is not something to laugh about. 
Well, that was obviously a matter of opinion, wasn't it? <laughs> Here's a complaint that came in again for Radio 4 to Woman's Hour. Raid the piece on contemporary fiction. A caller objected to the phrase irritatingly middle class and frightfully British. This is a Radio 4 listener we're talking about here. <laughs> uh, now, this is an interesting one. It's a complaint to Radio 2 um, to Gloria Hunniford. Caller felt that Gloria Hunniford should not promote the idea of burning fur coats, as they could be given to the poor and homeless people who sleep rough. <laughs> Good one. There's another one to Gloria Hunniford. Um, this is a great one. Again, someone went to their phone, found the number, dialed and said, the bathrobe mentioned on the show is no longer available from the bed centre in Sevenoaks. <laughs> uh, here's a complaint. Uh, this is a complaint about a programme called The Mary Whitehouse Experience. Anti-British. That's all it says. Uh, bastard. Now, um... <laughs> Uh, this is my favourite. So this is a brilliant phrase. This again. This came into Radio Four, and this was about the weather. Um, <laughs> this was from a uh, Mrs. Jarvis, who lives on the west coast of Scotland. Quote: Wanted to point out that the forecast for her area was wrong. Uh, another one about the weather on Radio 4. Caller was very angry that most of the bulletin had been taken up with today's weather with barely any news of tomorrow's. <laughs> I think it's the phrase very angry that's interesting there. Uh, complained about Gloria Hunniford. Caller complained that Gloria Hunniford was constantly clearing her throat and never apologised for doing so. <laughs> and you won't believe this, but that's from a Mrs. Fleming. <laughs> the Mary Whitehouse experience. <laughs> Religion isn't always hearts and flowers I tried being a Jehovah's Witness But I didn't like the hours Muslims can turn nasty And who needs the C of E? I finally found the perfect faith for me Come on, throw off your hats and coats Get naked now and shag some goats for Satan some folks dream of paradise, although that might be nice, don't bother waiting. Come on and join our horny throng, after all, what's wrong with copulating? If deeds are dirty, get them done, Satanism can be fun. The next time that you see a nun, start masturbating. Yeehaw. We'll never knock on doors when you're asleep. No, we won't. We're always far too busy buggering sheep and buggering sheep. And here's the major reason that we never need to moan. We'll never get Cliff Richard on the phone. No more buts, no more ifs. Get out your spades, dig up some stiffs for Satan. Well, drown some kittens, buy a gun. Think of all the fun you'll be creating. Well, being nasty is a treat, and being sweet is always so frustrating. Now here's a trick that you can try. I've got a chainsaw you can buy when folks raise their hands to testify. Hey, start amputating. <laughs> Come on down the devil's path. Drop a three-bar firing grandma's bath for Satan. It's a task you can perform with ease, because poaching OAPs is fascinating. So hit the vodka, hit the gin I know you'll find that sin is scintillating Well, don't be godly, be a slob Smack your vicar in the gob Yes, sir, Beelzebub Get into Satan The devil is my shepherd And boy, do I love the sheep <laughs> The Tracy Brothers there, anxious to get played on Breakfast Radio 1. Um, uh, um, uh, um, 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 I don't know whether many of you know that this is the second to last of the Mary Whitehouse. Next week is the last one. And this is my last one, and um, that's because next week I'm doing this benefit to raise money for uh, Saatchi and Saatchi. <laughs> You know, uh, just, uh, poor things, it's all gone horribly wrong and it's a case of if you see Sid, sack him. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's very sad. Soon they'll be wandering the streets asking people to invest in a cup of tea, you know. <laughs> um, the thing about the poll tax... <laughs> 
is that they're always going on about renter crowds. And I was thinking, what, what is this renter crowd? What renter crowd? Do they get paid equity rates? <laughs> is it sort of like going up there, laying into policemen and going, oh, darling, the last time we worked together was during the miners' strike. <laughs> I was going to do some work with the ALF, but I never work with children or animals. <laughs> anyway, I was, actually, um, I was actually thinking about the whole thing, though, and I went... I've been on some of the demonstrations, and the whole of the poll tax demonstrations have been taken over by extremists. They are being used by troublemakers, and I've never seen Tory voters so angry in my life. <laughs> They're furious. Um, but I just thought it's incredible how quickly things can change. It's incredible how soon... Uh, just one little event can change everything. It's like, um, Thursday... 3.30 p.m. Desert Orchid, the most beautiful horse in the world. 3.45. A worthless lump of walking glue. <laughs> but still more popular than Mrs. Thatcher. <laughs> anyway, uh, I was actually thinking as well, do you remember we used to sort of laugh at um, people sitting in Japan watching Endurance? I used to think that's very funny. Until the BBC broadcast a Jim Davidson special. <laughs> A Jim Davidson special is actually a contradiction in terms. <laughs> uh, but the, the story about Jim Davidson was not only his show, but he is, in fact, making a series about the Falklands War. And in, in it, he says, you're going to see scenes of incredible bravery. People watching his full-length show. <laughs> it's going to be Apocalypse Jim, you know, and they're coming out of the sort of, like, the, 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 the show just going, the horror! Well, oh, yes, my dream is actually to arrange a Jim Davidson tour, uh, which starts in Soweto and ends in Broadwater Farm Estates. <laughs> Go on, tell them the one about Chalky. They'll love it. Go on. <laughs> um, also, we had the, one of the major events was um, National Non-Smoking Day, which I'm renaming Smug Self-Righteous Bastard Day. <laughs> um, mainly because, like, smokers, smokers know that it kills them. It's like, you can get heart disease. I oh, know. You can get lung cancer. Oh, no, I want it. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> but actually, the, the ex-smokers are sort of like... Ex-smokers are like the health council's Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Ding dong, have you heard the good news? <laughs> Tobacco is the work of the devil and the number of the beast shall be number six. <laughs> you have to agree with them on that one, really. Also, the, other, the other thing, actually, about giving up smoking, people always offer you things. They go, oh, wouldn't you like another one? Oh, have another one. Like, nicotine is a drug. It's an addictive drug. You wouldn't go up to a recovering smack addict going, go on, have one. Go, no, I don't notice. <laughs> I won't tell anyone. Go on, have a bit. And finally, what, because things were so difficult with, um, with giving up smoking and non-smoking, what I've done is I've... Well, this is kind of homage to Ian Jury, but I've written The Smoker's Prayer. Our Father, who art Capstan... <laughs> High tar be thy name. <laughs> thy king size come. <laughs> thy will be done, hill. <laughs> On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily phlegm. <laughs> and forgive us our senior service as we forgive those who go was against us. <laughs> Lead us not into health conscious restaurants, but deliver us from camel. <laughs> For thine is the Rizzler, the old Holborn and Swan Vestas. Castella, Castella, Rothmen. Oh, I say. And now, the ageing, pain, illness, misery and death experience. Despite the fact that being old is an unqualified disaster, the media always try and cosy it up with such things as the wry, gentle and astonishingly unfunny epithets at the end of programmes like Looks Familiar. And, and I'll leave you with this thought. Um, <laughs> you know you're getting old when a woman asks you to play around and you say, hold on, I'll just get out the golf clubs. <laughs> oh, no, one of the contestants has died. The title is meant to suggest reassuring continuity. Tragically, though, it's a phrase most pensioners only use when talking about their grandchild or their front room. Hmm, looks familiar. <laughs> no, you're wrong, that was a great joke. Um... <laughs> Old people are also always talking about how everything used to cost a penny. We simply can't believe this. We think that in the 1930s, these people were just trying it on. Hello, I'd like one to see duck soup, please. Here's a penny. What? Here's a penny. Are you taking the piss? It's six quid for screen one. <laughs> oh, all right, then. 
Here you are. No, that's a penny. <laughs> and it's an old penny as well. Is it? Oh, dear. Oi, Mr Grimethorpe, someone here is trying to palm me off with a penny. Oh, no, it's not that bloke with the goofy teeth in the feather duster again, is it? <laughs> Presumably, if everything did cost a penny, the money markets must have been very dull. And now, on March the 15th, 1910, the time is 6.17, City News. Dealers were shocked today as long row shares moved up to a penny, with ICI <laughs> holding steady at a penny. And Allied Lions, after all this initial excitement, closed at a penny. Sports News, Stanley Matthews has finally agreed the transfer terms offered to him by Blackburn Rovers and has moved there for a record penny. <laughs> uh, so let me leave you with one final thought. You know you're getting old when... Oh, dear, I appear to have pissed in my blue pants. <laughs> Poets and writers have tried to define time in many ways, but perhaps the best description we have is by Martin Amis in London Fields. Um, and meanwhile, time goes about its immemorial work of making everyone look and feel like shit. <laughs> now, that was actually a spot-on impression of Martin Amis. Now, obviously, he's not actually that well-known a voice, so for the sceptical, here's a tape of Martin Amis reading, in fact, the same passage in a January edition of Radio 4's Kaleidoscope. And meanwhile, time goes about the <laughs> immemorial work of making everyone look and feel like shit. Uncanny. <laughs> Thank you. Since Martin Amis is obviously right, then a reverse, this is your life, i.e. before it's all happened, would be unbearable. Now, Rob. Rob, you're 13 now. You've got the whole of your life in front of you. You happy now? Very happy, Michael. Well, when you're 48, you will recognise this voice. Well, Mr Newman, I got the X-rays back and I'm afraid it's cancer. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but not to worry, because eight months earlier, you'll have this piece of good news. Well, Mr. Newman, it's been a long and painful struggle, but you're completely cured. <laughs> but we've got, we've got a long way to go before that. There's love and romance, and it all begins on the afternoon you lose your virginity. Ah, Newman. <laughs> Just, uh... So it's uh, just you in detention today, is it? <laughs> yes, yes, it's your music teacher and the only teacher that at the moment you like, Mr. Clulo. <laughs> but there is light at the end of the tunnel. Adopted as you were at the age of only two months, you finally discover on your deathbed who your real father is. Now, let me leave you. <laughs> with one final thought. Oh, I've forgotten it. <laughs> A complete lack of sensitivity, bloodlust, social inadequacy and general worries about the size of your penis all add up to four good reasons for buying new Firepower Monthly. This magazine builds up month by month into a comprehensive guide to the world's most lethal weapons and weaponry. If it goes bang, we'll write about it. <laughs> In issue one, we face the great debate. Entry wounds. Where can they inflict the greatest pain? In head, chest or bollocks? <laughs> we investigate dum-dum bullets and ask internal implosion or intestinal spillage. This month, we test fire the new Kalashnikov LX-7C and its revolutionary new maiming and mutilation system. Each issue, we seek the expert's view. In The Killer's Killer, we talk to Pol Pot and get his ten top tips for genocide. <laughs> new Firepower Monthly, from Sten guns to strategic nuclear missiles, with hundreds of colour illustrations in red. The complete guide to male inadequacy.
Right, now we're going to do the uh, phone-ins again. Um, now, the first lot of people that we uh, are going to phone up now are people who once came to Mary Whitehouse Experience and l were foolish enough to leave their names and addresses uh, and volunteer for the phone-in. Wayne Clark, right. Hello? Hello, uh, could I speak to uh, Wayne Clark, please? Wayne Clark? Yes. He's not here, is he? Uh, this is uh, British Telecom uh, Engineering Department. Um, just uh, just a, a little test that we're carrying out. We've had a few problems with the phones uh, in your area. Uh, it's to do with the frequency range of the phones. Uh, this is they're, they're cutting off the top and bottom frequencies. I won't go into it. It's a bit uh, a bit technical. But, but basically, could uh, could you could you just say something uh, in a very high voice for me, please? Is this a wind up? No, no, no. <laughs> No, 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 it's a, <laughs> a standard procedure. Um, it's, uh, we're actually at a conference, a British Telecom conference, and uh, we have the engineering department trainees here, and we're, we're, we're just demonstrating to them how to conduct a, uh, a uh, frequency test. Why uh, did you ask for Wayne Clark? Uh, well, uh, we... Uh, <laughs> we... Uh, well, you know what director in crimes is like. I mean, it's, <laughs> they told us Wayne Clark lived here. I mean, uh, what, what can I do about it? I mean, uh, Who told you? does he not live here? Well, uh, this is the number that we have for, for Wayne Clark. Do you know a Wayne Clark at all? He's my son. Ah, you're, you're Mrs. Clark. Yes, well, he's, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's given us your number in order for us to phone up and take the piss out of him, but unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, we've got through to you, I'm afraid. Uh, this is actually BBC Radio 1 here. Oh, could he hear some sort of thought? What sort of giggles? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the, gig the giggles are an audience of 300 people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, it's a shame he's not in, really, because... Um... Yeah, I can kill him. I thought it was him to say he's going to be a bit late, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I should well, 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 uh, well, Steve, uh, who'd have thought Wayne Clark's mum was a university professor? <laughs> um, well, that was marvellous. Um, I thought she'd never put the phone down. Um, well, Amanda, we've, we're trying to phone up the chat back line now, are we? OK. All conversations on this chat line are recorded for your own protection and you must be 18 or over to be on this line. What is it, Weir? You're huffing and puffing there. I'm tired, Gil. I'm tired. How can you tell you? What do you mean, how can I be tired? Have you been... I've been out working all day. Hello? Hello? Hello, is this the chat back line? Yes, it is. It doesn't sound that? too friendly at the moment. <laughs> um, um, my name's Roger. Sorry? My name's Roger. I'm really interested in jokes. Do you know any good jokes? Hello? Hello, who's that? Stop talking through your underpants. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> oh. What did you say? If you want to make something about my underpants, come around here, all right? Who wants to talk to you about your underpants? I stink like you. Shut your gut. <laughs> <laughs> it's Oscar Wilde. Oh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, are you Bernard Matthews? <laughs> what is going on? I don't know, we've got a wazard down here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's C B talk or something. No, you, you have three hundred wazards down here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi, do you think that uh, privatisation has benefited the telephone service at all? <laughs> The Mary Whitehouse Experience. It was written and performed by Rob Newman, Steve Punt, Hugh Dennis, Mark Thomas, Rebecca Front and the Tracy Brothers. David Baddiel is currently appearing in a first-year's bedroom at his old primary school. <laughs> the 
sound was by Alec Hale Munro and the producer was Amanda Yanucci. <laughs> And they are right over the top. Must go and see them record one of those shows. Sensational. The very White House experience. Just gone 11 o'clock. Let's do it. <laughs> And where two or three are gathered. the morning are ours and as always our thanks to the formidable 1FM mayhem and chaos and giggles galore dispensed as always by the irrepressible quite irresistible inhabitants of the merry white house experience and pray do stay for the saturday sunday rock show because your own open requests just might be those from bon jovi brian may and friends thin lizzie peter gabriel wasp even bane